So I am uh, Lieutenant Commander Richard Reyes. I'm a student here at the National Security Affairs Department, and I'm studying in the uh, Latin America track. I travel to uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and the uh, tri-state border area between Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay. Brazil and Argentina had a, a nuclear program in the 70s uh, under their military dictatorships. And uh, as these two countries transitioned into democratic regimes, uh, they sought to establish regional cooperation to kind of diffuse the situation that was happening. Um, and the Carter administration had a lot to do with, with how these things developed. Um, ABAC, which is an institution, a binational institution created by Brazil and Argentina. And basically um, what it does is it, it, they monitor each other's nuclear programs. Um, so on the civilian side, this has been of great benefit because uh, Brazil allows Argentine inspectors to come in and look at their programs and Argentinians likewise allow Brazilians to come in. So it has fostered a good relationship uh, and it is, it is a good example of regional cooperation that has worked. During my travels down there, I was able to interview Mr. Antonio Oliveira, who is the Secretary General of ABAC. And uh, we discussed uh, this question, um, you know, what, how, how are the two countries controlling their radioactive materials? And I got a really good sense that uh, they, they are, for the most part, well regulated uh, on the civilian side. Uh, weapons grade uh, uranium, those uh, enriched uranium where you could produce a WMD, I feel like uh, they certainly do have a pretty good handle on that. However, uh, lower grade radioactive materials, things that are common in other countries as well, not just in Brazil and Argentina, but uh, radioactive materials that are, for instance, in hospitals, uh, those, are, those are relatively untracked. And so if a criminal network uh, were to get a hand on some of these radioactive materials, they could certainly be smuggled through the porous borders. The tri-state border area is a good example of where organized crime has been pretty pervasive, and that is because uh, it is a, an area that is not um, controlled as well as other parts, uh, specifically because it is a free trade zone between the three nations, and so um, organized crime has been able to set up uh, shops and businesses in there. Greater emphasis needs to be placed on regional cooperation. Um, you know, there's uh, Interpol, there's the uh, international police. Uh, the Asian countries have Asian Pol. Uh, in Latin America and South America, they have Mercosur, which is a trading block, but they don't have a Mercosur Pol. So I feel that that more emphasis needs to be placed on developing uh, police cooperation that can cross borders uh, to look for or, you know, transnational organized crime. More emphasis needs to be placed on improving the rule of law, um, you know, specifically in Paraguay that has large um, problems with their infrastructure. Um, and also eliminating some of the economic incentives for these organized criminal networks to set up.